Uh, so Jason's over here and they've got this breaching trailer uh, and we're going to show you how to set everything up. So uh, it comes with a tongue trailer right here as you can see. Uh, easiest thing is get some extra blocks. So we're just going to go ahead and throw that underneath here. And all we're doing with that is basically just putting that down there and that's going to go ahead and uh, just let him get this trailer up uh, off the uh, ball. It's a two inch receiving ball. You can see he's pulling the pin out so the pin's going to come out. Uh, once you do that, you have to obviously open that up, which is going to then release that from the uh, ball on the truck. You can see it came loose from there. All right. So from there, we're just going to leave it there. He's going to unplug here. On the new ones, you got to be careful because they're not like they were back in the day. So you want to uh, try to support it when you pull it out so you don't break it. Wrap it around so it doesn't uh, get uh, beat up or uh, crimped. And then you want to go ahead and take off your uh, tow chain. And usually we just go ahead and put them up out of the way, as you can see. So that way nobody trips on them. So you got that out of the way. He's going to go ahead and pull the truck forward. Once he does that, uh, we'll lower this a little bit. Uh, and then once we lower that, we will go ahead and put our jack stands down. There's four jack stands on each corner of the trailer. So this is the uh, Jersey Tactical Breaching Trailer. And you'll see that there's four in each corner to make it level. Uh, for the person so pretty easy to set up so he's pulling out he's going to go ahead and go forward from here we're going to go ahead and uh, lower this simply by just cranking it down so one of the things that's important to know about this is when you are doing a trailer obviously you want it to be level uh, you want to set it up on a level spot the best that you can the other thing also is uh, when you put the jack stands down in each corner, you want to try to go ahead and have the uh, trailer somewhat level. It just makes it easier to drop these stands down. So well, we'll start back here in the corner. So you take this pin and the pin comes out and it just rotates down as you can see right here. So that rotates out and then you just line it back up and you put this pin back in. And then from here, we'll just crank on it a few times and our first support is up. We're all up and running. Pretty easy so far. We'll come over here, repeat the same thing. So we're gonna do this basically four times. Again, take up a little bit of the slack here, pull the pin out, let it rotate down. And then we're gonna go ahead and line up the hole. And again, we're gonna crank this up like such, just to go ahead and give it a little bit of support. So now we've got the back two corners done. All right. Repeat it up here. We'll repeat it up here. Same procedure. So now you got all four stands down. <clears throat> He's doing the last one right there. That should be good about there. So you can see the front is slightly up uh, from the back. Now we're going to go ahead and level it off by cranking the back up. So you can see two people literally, you know, under a minute set this up. That's about where you want to be. The most important thing is you can see over here is the tires. You want to uh, come up off the ground so that basically you're taking the suspension of the trailer, the over the road trailer, and you're taking it out of play. If you don't get it uh, to where um, the tires come slightly off the ground or the pressure comes off the ground, what will happen is the inertia will be robbed on your trailer because the suspension of the trailer is taken away from it. It doesn't work like a real door. So the most important thing is, is basically make sure your jack stands uh, have the weight of the trailer supporting it. And then also, obviously, you want to make it uh, so it's nice and level. So you, you walk around, you eyeball, it doesn't have to be perfect. You see, this might be a little low, so we'll crank this up a little bit. And we should be pretty good. You can see that tire is just barely off the ground. Usually one of the tires um, is usually coming off the ground because it's usually, the ground's usually not always perfectly level. So you're not gonna have both tires off the ground. Normally you'll probably have one slightly off the ground. Uh, you can see at this point, it's very stable ready to go. So the next thing is Jason's going to go ahead. He's going to take off these super easy. 
it's stabilized so he can climb up there or, or he can go ahead and uh, do it from the side. It's heavy, so however the person wants to do it. Um, there's two pins, so you definitely want to support it. It's all steel. There's two handles right here. He's going to pick this up and then he's just going to simply put the, it right into these uh, two receivers. And it, you can sit it like that or you can replace the pins uh, back in there so you don't lose them. So um, the most important thing about that is when you're going to take this uh, at the end of the day and uh, move it, you want to make sure that you uh, put that back. It sounds uh, simple, but again, you want to make sure that you don't leave this hanging off the back of the trailer. So that's the most important thing is basically go ahead and put the, uh, um, the stair back. Yep, yeah, replaced it with the pins, right? And literally that's your steps. Your steps are all set up, super easy. You can see how strong they are, good to go. He'll, repl he'll do the exact same thing now in the front. So he's gonna do the same thing in the front with the same set of steps. So again, uh, he's basically got two sets of steps and it's set up uh, relatively fast. We're going a little slower than normal just because we're walking everybody through it. So he's going to do that. He'll replace the pins and we're up and running. So pretty simple. Again, want to make sure that everybody uh, understands how to set this up safely. A couple things to point out while he's doing that are, you know, obviously pinch points. You want to watch your fingers when you're doing that together uh, because obviously uh, the pieces of steel being inserted into each other. Now, before you start using it, you want to take a quick check of the actual trailer. Make sure all your jacks are in place. Make sure your pins are in place and nothing's loose, right? So you want to make sure that everything's good to go. Uh, if you're up in the northeast where we were at and this thing's out in the weather or it had some snow or some ice, you want to make sure, obviously, that you've removed anything that's slippery. We're underneath cover here, but you can still see uh, that there's some moisture from condensation. So depending on how slippery it is, you want to make sure your students are aware of that or you can wipe it off depending on, on uh, whatnot. Non-slip tread, non-slip uh, grip on the uh, trailer itself. So we would come up here. No, we're good. All right, so if we were going to take this uh, over the road, say we had to, uh, you know, um, take it somewhere, you know, and we wanted to travel it, uh, like Oklahoma State Police uh, uh, have some of our doors and, and they uh, transport them to different places. If you have it set up on a trailer and you don't want to disassemble it or you're using our trailer, the easiest way is to go ahead and strap this here with a ratchet strap just like this. That's the reason why the door opens up on this angle for, for mobility. So you can literally just put a ratchet strap around here and then ratchet strap it in place. And what that's gonna allow you to do is basically trailer this over the road without any uh, wind drag. So you'll be all good to go. It's gonna trailer uh, and then you'll have no issues. We just literally went from New Jersey to Florida for two weeks uh, and everywhere in between. Not a single issue with that setup. So uh, pretty simple to use. Uh, we're gonna just use uh, basically some shims. So this will be some of the material we'll use or prepackaged ones like that. They got different sizes, or you can buy what's called lath. Uh, all that information is on the website. So you could, that's some of the material we'll use for the training today. Some of the other material we'll use uh, are wooden dowels. So you can buy them pre-cut or you can buy full length ones and cut them yourself. Uh, so any three quarters to a half inch for the locking mechanism up top. Uh, the biggest component that you'll need is 
right here, which is your furring strips. So this will be, uh, they come general box stores, your Lowe's, Home Depot, so forth. So they come in bundles like this. And then what you do is you take your circular saw or any type of saw, and then you're just gonna cut them uh, ahead of time in length. So we'll do that next. And then we'll get these guys up and running. All the specs on the type of wood that you wanna use is on our instructions on our website, jerseytactical.com. Um, you can also find uh, the written safety instructions, even assembly of the door and uh, things of that nature uh, on our YouTube channel, uh, which is all found at uh, our website, jerseytactical.com. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cut some of this material up and we're gonna start training on the door with these guys. So, nothing rocket science. So there's our first bundle, one by twos. All right, these are called uh, furring strips. You can see right here, there's a hundred different companies that make them. Uh, this is what we recommend using for uh, this particular prop, uh, our breaching door, uh, which is on the uh, trailer. So cut them apart and then you can just snap them out and then you're up and running. So here's our first set. Again, we usually use like a measuring stick ahead of time, so we don't have to measure anything with a marker. I just take one of the previous ones we were using, eyeball it, we're up and running. So pretty fast, right? Pretty easy to do. The other thing is also uh, iPro. You always have to have iPro on when you're either doing that or using our gear. Uh, ANSI rated or higher, so uh, that's obviously in our instructions, but everybody's got to have iPro when we're uh, using uh, the equipment in the trailer. Right now, good little trick is PEX tubing. Okay, so we'll use the PEX tubing and we'll rig it to a different portion of the door. And what that lets you do is basically uh, make the door so it bends and it flexes. Um, it's not anything earth shattering. We've been doing it for a long, long time. I've uh, just been teaching people. So you can do it on other breaching doors out there whatnot. Some you can't because of the way they're set up. Uh, but anyway, uh, for the most part, so we'll just cut the same amount of length, uh, you know, somewhere around 16 inches on that. You can go ahead and use the same circular saw. And again, we're just going to eyeball it. So we're going to come up here, right? And then we just start our saw. Cuts it pretty simple, right? You can also do longer length as well. Again, you just eyeball it. We've got two pieces. We'll use the rest of that uh, for future training. It's like Joe, Jason hit the lottery, right? Donate. <laughs> So we'll use this later on and show you guys how to use that. Uh, just a really good tool for training. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to rig a couple more pieces real fast just with some of those score marks. And then we're going to get up and get everybody some reps. Okay. And we're going to also show a couple different techniques and let everybody explore with some stuff if that makes sense. Okay. We're just gonna go ahead and do some quick score marks like that. We'll go ahead, rotate it over. So we made some easy pieces, nice and easy peasy. And obviously that could be from the lower shims or that lath all the way up to these to the full pieces. So we got that whole progression. Point of contact, I'm bending over. I'm gonna pick up some, uh, some uh, different shims. These are super cheap, super easy to find. Um, you guys are more than capable of you know, doing this. We're gonna rig it so it's just your general office door. So we're gonna go ahead and put three pieces of shim in there. So fairly decent door, nothing crazy, but uh, it, you know, it will take some, some energy to go ahead and pop this open. 